All right. So um, in the last lecture, we learned about um, the magnetic force. Okay. The last thing you learned was the magnetic force um, when a charged particle in a magnetic field. Okay. And the equation was something like this F, actually this one. So here I have it already. Okay. So Q, P, V, sine 90. So here it is sine 90 degree. So I'm telling you why it is sine 90 degree. Okay. So it was the equation. Uh, okay. So if I write down here, it will be something like this. F equal to Q, V, V, sine theta. Okay. Now let's say we have this magnetic field. Okay. So here the cross sign means uh, into the page. Okay. And we have a... Uh, charged particle, so negatively charged particle, the direction of the negatively charged particle, uh, I mean the force, sorry, uh, the, the velocity for the negatively charged particle is this one. So you see that uh, the direction of the V and the direction of the B are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so perpendicular means that I equal to 90 degree. Okay, and that's why we write here 90 degree. And sine 90 degrees 1. So the force here is Q V B. Okay. Now if you use the right hand rule, the third right hand rule, you can show that the negatively charged particle follows this circular path. Okay. So what we see here, if you have a, a magnetic field, if you charge in a magnetic field, and if the direction of the initial direction of the charge is um, perpendicular to the magnetic field, then the charged particle follows a, a circular path, okay? So for negative charge, you see that this is following this circular path, okay? For positive charge, if we have a positive charge instead of a negative charge, it would be something like this, okay? It would be going in this direction. Okay, but yeah, you can do it. Uh, now you know how to use the right hand rule. So by using the right hand rule, you can easily show that. Okay. Now here you see that it is circular path, right? The charged particle is moving in a circular path. And earlier in physics one, you already learned that to keep something in a circular path, we need something called the centripetal force, right? So here, this force is basically providing the centripetal force and that's why the charged particle is in a circular path, okay? Now, if you remember, the expression for the, um, for the centripetal force is this, okay? It's basically Fr equal to Mar, okay? Fr is the centripetal force, M times acceleration, okay? Centripetal acceleration. This is basically the Newton's second law second law of motion and the centripetal acceleration is v square over r okay and that's why this so here this centripetal force is uh, supplied by the magnetic force qvv so if i equate them i get something like this qvb and that is equal to mv square over r Okay, and then if I solve this equation for R, I get something like this, mv square q um, bv. Uh, yeah, qvv. And then uh, you see mv, so we have v square um, in the numerator and a v in the denominator. So they cancel out. I mean, one of them is cancel out. So the expression for R is this. And this tells us that when a charged particle in a circular path, the radius of the trajectory depends on this equation. Where M is the mass of the charged particle, V is the velocity, Q is the charge, and B is the magnetic field. Okay. All right. Now, um, what happened if... Uh, if the velocity is not perpendicular to the magnetic field. So in this slide, the velocity and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. But what happens if it is not perpendicular? Okay. So if it is not perpendicular, that means it has two components. One is this one, one is this one. One is perpendicular, one is parallel. 
right so you see that this component is perpendicular so because of this we we get a circular path okay because of this we get a circular path and then because of this which is parallel uh, parallel to the magnetic field because of this it moves forward okay and that's why when the velocity is not perpendicular to the magnetic field instead of getting a circular path we get a circular helical path okay we get a spiral path okay so something like this so here i have a simulation you can see also here in this simulation okay here okay so So you see that circular path is basically for the perpendicular component and then it is moving forward because of the parallel component. Okay, so you see what you see here is a helical path. Okay. All right. Now, uh, earlier I mentioned that earth has magnetic field. So here you see that I'm showing the direction of the magnetic field lines. Okay. And now you know that... Um, charged particle from the outer space or the sun enters um, all time they enters the earth magnetic field okay enters the earth okay so when they are uh, when they enters the earth atmosphere the same thing happen okay same thing happen means uh, this this thing happen okay this phenomena happen okay and the charged particle from the sun or the outer space basically most of the time they are not uh, perpendicular to the uh, perpendicular or exactly parallel to the magnetic field they are uh, with some angle okay and that's why they make some helical path in uh, in earth magnetic field something like this okay okay and uh, uh, the charged particle um, uh, when they enter the earth atmosphere because of the ionization they also um, emit some kind of color okay and because of these okay in uh, I mean we see this kind of phenomena in our sky and it basically visible in the northern latitude okay and we call it aurora borealis or northern light okay i mean yeah you, we can also see it in the um in the southern uh, latitude and the southern latitude it has different name they call it australia's or southern light okay but yeah this color is basically due to the ionization but with the sp spiral shape okay spiral shape of this light is basically due to the phenomena which you just learned Okay, and it's due to the charged particle that enters from the outer space or from the sun um, interacting with the earth magnetic field, making the path spiral. Okay, all right. The next thing I'm going to show is the magnetic field, the, the new, uh, I mean, uh, the expression for the magnetic field due to the, due to a uh, current in a wire. Okay, so earlier, we already learned that when there is a current in an uh, in a current carrying wire, there is a magnetic field. But what is the um, expression? Okay, what is the expression for the uh, magnetic field? Okay, that we are going to learn now. Okay, so you already see this picture earlier. Okay, and a very careful exper uh, experiment shows that the the magnetic field here is proportional to i that you already see okay higher the current higher the uh, magnetic field right and um, we also see that it is inversely proportional to r okay so remember that for mag uh, for electric field it was inversely proportional to r square so here it is just r so don't confuse between this r square and r okay and that tells us that as you are away from the wire the magnetic field is less okay now when you combine them together you get something like this i over r 
but if you want to write an equation you need a proportionality constant and here the proportionality constant is this okay and this also found by using some careful experiment okay and mu zero has some special name similar to epsilon zero um in 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 electrostatic okay mu zero called uh called permeability of free space okay and epsilon zero if you remember it was called uh parme permittivity of free space okay and the value of mu zero is this 4 pi times 10 to the power minus 7 tesla meter per ampere okay all right now once you know the 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 magnetic field uh, from a current carrying wire then let's do a little bit complicated uh, example so let's try to understand the force between two parallel wires that carries current i1 and i2 okay so let's say we have two parallel wires one carries current i1 and another carries current i2 and i want to know what is the force on here and what is the force on here and whether they are repulsive or attractive okay so to do that we use the uh, the expression that we just derived i mean this expression okay for magnetic field let's say we have current i1 okay and due to the current i1 we have these magnetic fields okay and this magnetic field will be equal to b equal to mu let me call it b1 mu0 over 2 pi and then i1 over uh, so if it is if i want to know what is the uh, what is the magnetic field at this position so from here to here it is d so here in the denominator i will have a d right now now you see that we have a current carrying wire now forget about this uh, sorry now forget about uh, this line i mean this um, current this current carrying wire just consider that we have a magnetic field here these blue lines are the uh, magnetic field okay now you said you see that in this magnetic field we have a current carrying wire f2 okay so because the uh, because we have a current carrying wire in a magnetic field we should have a force magnetic force that will be 2 on 1 i mean due to the magnetic field of 1 so the force on i2 force on the uh, for force on this i call it 2 and by 1 it means the uh, the due to the magnetic field of one b one okay and if you remember it is i l b sine theta right so here it will be i two okay because i'm trying to find the uh find the force on i two right so i two l is some arbitrary length of this wire okay And then uh, B here is B1 due to the magnetic field at B1. Okay. And sine theta here you can show that sine theta is equal to sine 90 degree and sine 90 degree is 1. Because here you see that the direction of the current is this one and the magnetic field's direction is this one at this point. Okay, tangent to the magnetic field line. So you see that this angle is 90 degree. So sine 90 degree is 1. So F21 is basically this one. And if I substitute the value of B1, you get mu0 2 pi I1 I2 D times L. Okay. All right. So similarly, um, you can show that the force on F1 due to the magnetic field 2 is this and uh, surprisingly they are equal okay now you see that we get um, equal forces on both F1 and I mean uh, I1 and I2 okay but the question is uh, what is the direction 
what is their direction so these are the magnitude but i want to know what are the directions okay and to understand the direction you just use the uh, right hand rule the second right hand rule okay so the uh, for for example if i want to know what is the direction for this one force f2 one so this is the index finger okay this is the three finger okay so index finger three finger and you can show that the direction of the force is this one okay and similarly for i1 you can show that the direction of the force is this one so when uh, uh, we have two current carrying wires and the direction of the current is the same then they attract each other so we call them parallel okay so when the parallel when we have parallel currents they attract and in this case you see that one uh, the direction of currents are opposite okay so in this case you see they are uh, repelling each other so uh, uh, we call it anti-parallel so anti-parallel currents repel each other okay so remember that parallel currents attract anti-parallel currents repel okay now uh, here this l is an arbitrary length okay so that's why it's easy to i mean it's better to um, uh, write an expression for the force per unit length okay i mean you know that this this wire may be uh, maybe infinitely long okay so that's why it's better to uh, write an expression for f over l the force per unit length so if you s divide both sides by l the expression is very simple now is mu 0 2 pi i1 i2 over d okay so the force per unit length is this all right now um uh, let me talk about the solenoid or electromagnets okay so you already see this so when we have a multiple loop okay we call it a solenoid and this solenoid are used to uh, create uh, i mean to make a electromagnet okay and what is the magnetic field in a solenoid so we already see earlier that b is proportional to i and we also see that b is proportional to n here n is the number number of loop per unit length okay so you already see these two in a simulation right so if i combine these two we get i n okay so here you need a a proportionality constant if you want to write an equation so here the proportionality constant is the permittivity uh, permeability of the free space okay and because small n is the number of uh, loop per unit length sometime we wrote uh, uh, something like this so n is the number total number and l is the length so the number per unit length so if i want to know what is the magnetic field inside the solenoid we use this equation and we already know what is the direction of the magnetic field uh, by using the first right hand rule so here you have to use the first right hand rule because here you have current and you want to know what is the direction of the magnetic field okay all right so uh, here um, this is a simple example of uh, electromagnet the doorbell so let me show uh, let me tell you how it works okay so here you see we have a bell we have a solenoid or loop here this is just a spring and this is an iron core okay so what happened here when you press the switch so when the there is uh, when you press the switch the circuit is closed that means a current flowing through this um, electromagnet so there will be magnetic field here and this magnetic field attracts this iron rod because this iron is a ferromagnetic okay so when it attracts it hits this bell and we hear the bell so you see it's a very simple all right the last thing i want to talk in this chapter is the torque okay so you already learned torque in physics one okay so torque is represented by using this uh, strange symbol tau okay 
and if you remember it was something like this r f sin theta okay so r is the uh, r i mean it, i mean torque is related somehow related to the rotation okay and r is the um, uh, the length from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied and f is the force and sin theta is the angle between r and f okay so we need this equation somewhere here to understand the torque on a current loop so here we are basically trying to understand magnetic torque okay so to understand that let's say we have a physical magnet with magnetic field so the direction of the magnetic field is this one okay and let's say we have a loop current carrying loop here so here this this one this rectangular uh, thing is basically a current carrying loop and here it also shows the direction of the current okay so you see this is the direction of the current okay and the loop is basically horizontal compared to i mean with respect to the to the um, um, magnetic field line okay so you see that here and here in this side and this side the current and the magnetic fields are perpendicular uh, parallel to each other parallel or anti parallel okay so for example in this direction this is anti parallel i mean here it is anti parallel here it is parallel okay so that means sine theta is sine 0 degree or sine 180 degree which means uh, the value of sine is zero, okay? So because sine theta is zero here and here, there is no force here and here, okay? But here and here, they are perpendicular to each other. The direction of the current and the direction of the magnetic field lines are perpendicular to each other. So the force here in this side and in this side will be something like this, I, a, B, sine theta is sine 90 degree and sine 90 degree is 1. Here I is the current, B is the magnetic field, A is the length, uh, A is this length basically. So you see A is here, so it means this length is A. Okay? All right. So you see that. So the force here is I, A, B okay now i if i want to know what is the torque okay we need to use this equation okay all right so let's see what we get so you can show that uh, the force here and force here will be exactly the same i mean the magnitude will be exactly the same but because the direction of the currents are opposite one force will be upward another force will be downward okay and because of upward and downward force there will be rotation about this axis okay so the loop will basically rotate about this axis okay so if i want to know what is the torque then we need this distance and this is this is b so this means this is b by 2 okay so if i substitute the value r and f here in this equation we get something like this so f is iab and b by 2 is the r okay and sine theta is a sine 90 degree so you see this is 90 degree sine 90 degree is 1 so tau 1 we get something like this okay and tau 2 is exactly the same value okay and you can show that the uh, the rotation because of this f it will go in this direction that means it is clockwise and because of this force it is going this direction and again this is clockwise so both tau both torques are clockwise so the net torque will be the sum of these these two torques okay so the net torque is tau 1 plus tau 2 and if you add them together uh, you get something like this so half and half it will be 1 so the this will be just this i a b times the magnetic field so a is 
small a is this length uh, small b is this length for that loop okay so this is a and this is b and a b tells us that this is the area of this rectangular loop so if i replace a b to area then i get tau equal to this right now if you have n number of loops i can uh, write the torque as something like this n times i a b okay and sometimes n i a is called the magnetic dipole and use m okay magnetic dipole moment or we and then we use m instead of n i a okay so this is the torque okay and here in this example we use the horizontal loop the loop makes uh, uh, I mean the loop was horizontal with the magnetic field right but if it makes an angle theta with the uh, with the magnetic field lines something like this picture then we have to use a sine theta in the expression of tau okay now why it is important to learn torque because many devices are basically made using this phenomena okay using this uh, simple thing okay so what are uh, one of the important application is the electric motor okay galvanometer loudspeaker microphone etc so i'm just going to show how a motor uh, uses these things okay so you see that we have a uh, magnetic field magnet so this uh, this uh, red and uh, blue basically shows you the magnetic field or magnet so you can use the magnetic field and you see that we have a loop so here i am just showing a one loop okay and if you connect it with the current okay so you see that the, uh, the now it is showing the direction of the current okay and if i if i uh, yeah if i want to show the force the forces direction now uh, i mean it's showing the forces direction you see that f okay one is upward one is downward and if i run it you see that it is moving okay it is rotating okay and based on this the motor are basically designed motor and many other things okay so motor is a simple example okay so although motor looks like complicated but you see that it's a very simple phenomena you need a you need a magnet or you need a magnetic field and then you need a loop okay so if the loop are properly um, oriented with the magnetic field line it will rotate when it's connected to the current okay so that's it for this chapter in the next lecture i'm going to solve some of the classwork problem okay all right